Hello and welcome to the first video debrief for part zero. My name is Samantha Taylor and I am here as your instructor for Intermediate Financial Accounting 2. We are in the fall semester of 2020 and I have been reviewing your wonderful questions and responses to our part zero Nearpod, which was set out as pre-work before the semester started. The thing is, this is a tricky course. There are nine chapters and nine weeks, plus a week for review and your exams. So, you know, three weeks on, one week review and test, three weeks on, one week review and test, so on and so forth, and then we get to wrap up the semester. The purpose of these debrief videos are for us to talk real time. I'll be watching your videos, What's your working knowledge? You saw some pre-work, you saw our base videos. Those videos are, gosh, they are really meant to serve the foundation. We can go back to the basics for so many of these things. And I, I know it sounds a little bit funny, but you'll be struggling with a concept. And the goal will be to understand, okay, what bucket does it go into? And I'll talk about buckets a little bit later. But essentially, we only have three choices on the balance sheet two choices on the income statement, and then they can either go up or down for each. So which bucket, which direction, make the journal entry balance. To this day, to this day, um, my friends and I, I know, when we talk accounting, I know, we do, um, we talk about journal entries and what is the journal entry for that, what does it look like, because if we can bring it back to the basics, the base level, we can build on the base, and then we can be strong, confident professionals, and we can figure this stuff out. Figuring out stuff that we haven't seen before, you know, and I know that every instructor says, don't memorize, just know it, uh, but I, it is so true because it will actually help you work smarter, not harder. You will be able to just synthesize, understand, apply, and the last part I'll bring you, the last kind of quote I'll leave you with today will be a quote on intelligence, and sure, the person that is writing that definition of intelligence, they may have been referring to artificial intelligence or how do you know when something is AI, but I'd offer that it actually has a lot of uh, really good application to what intelligence is in general. So the first question was, after reading the syllabus, what is your goal for this class? The frequent responses tended to come with a grade. So people said anywhere from, you know, I want to pass the course, to I'd like to get a B minus in the course, to I'd like to get an A plus. So lots of A's, A minuses, A plus. But what was really interesting is I saw a lot of non-grade related responses. So I want to walk you through a few of these. My goal for this class is to challenge myself. I find that there are times when I get comfortable coasting along my courses and in my learning, and although it works, I want to push myself and use all available resources as aligned in the syllabus in order to do so. And they are looking forward to the challenge in the material this term. So yeah, it is challenging, uh, but you can absolutely do it. The course is, you know, it's set up in a way that you can see your own spot. So don't take my word for it. Look at it. Uh, if you put in the focused intensity, uh, you will achieve your definition of success and you will be challenged along the way. Uh, you will have an opportunity where, you know, if you want to take it easy a little bit, you'll realize that it will only kind of, it'll really limit yourself and limit the types of questions that you can ask because they say, in order to get better answers, ask better questions. So really, what you get out of this is what you'll put in, not only in a reflection of grade, but in overall learning and fulfillment. So I thought that was a really, uh, really great response. To walk away with a broad, yet relatively deep understanding of how IFRS actually works as opposed to merely a set of rules. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, synthesis, application, IFRS is about and don't do a shot of espresso every time I say, uh, IFRS is about reflecting the economic reality of the situation. So what is the substance over the form? What is this really trying to say versus what do the lawyers and bankers have written out these contracts to say? So absolutely. 
And I like the broad yet deep because, yes, we have nine chapters and they, they do span. Like they, we cover all of the liabilities and, uh, and equity accounts. So it is relatively broad. Uh, but we do go pretty deep, but you'll start to see themes and understand, and I really encourage you to see how each one of these flows together and impacts the others. Okay, my goal is to do everything in my capabilities to set myself up for success. Ooh, and this, this part hit home. I do not want to finish this course and think to myself, I could have done better if I were to have only have studied more. If I were to have put in a number of, on the success, it would be for an A minus in this course. So what stuck with me about that was, you know, the person didn't say it in terms like this, but as far as regret goes, you know, I think we've all been there with some people who say, oh yeah, you know, in the gym, like I could lift more if I tried harder. Oh, I can only do this. The thing is to not leave yourself with those regrets and acknowledge that we are all doing our best and that looks different every day. But also, if you're in a moment and you're like, oh, okay, well, I could just like click through this and click through this really quickly and get through the smart book, or maybe I do half tonight, and if I'm not feeling it because I worked a little bit harder, I'm going to put it aside and come back to it tomorrow and see if maybe after a night's sleep, it, you know, well, I want to get it done right away, maybe letting it sink in a little bit, um, actively forgetting coming back to it, maybe that will help me with this material a little bit more. So giving yourself that opportunity to really minimize that regret and really to do your best and set yourself up for your best chances to attain your definition of success. After reading the syllabus, I'm particularly looking forward to working through CPA Way work as it will offer through, uh, insight into the CPA program after graduation. Yeah, so that's why it's here. We do a little bit of pre-work to get you uh, comfortable with the terms and knowledge. Then we have the videos that will set the base level of knowledge. And then we're going to apply those. We're going to apply those each week with a CPA wave problem. And they are, uh, myself and our development team, we develop them to reflect not at the CPA wave problems because the CPA practice cases would have, you know, three or four or five accounting issues or accounting and tax and an audit. Uh, they have them all mixed in together, but this takes about like 20% or 25% of a case and puts it into uh, a document and we walk you through the CPA way steps. My goal for this class is to soak up all the information I can. Uh, I want to do well in this course because I really struggled with the IFA one. People, I have to tell you, you are not your IFA 1 course. That is, that is a difficult course. This is a difficult course. This is a different semester. And if you want to achieve your definition of success, whatever that is, you can, you will. And I'll be right alongside with you. Yes, this is online. I've done a lot of learning and teaching online and it really is what you make of it. Meaning if you put in the work, you will get out the reward. It's no different than being in class. People can be present in class, but not really present. Similarly, people can be online and be engaged and be enthralled with the materials. So soak it up. Know that you are not your grade in IFA 1. I do not know what your grades are or were then, uh, unless you tell me, and that is up to you. But it also really, it doesn't, I've seen students go up from B minus to an A minus. I've seen students go down, and this is all what they told me. Um, you know, people that got an A minus that went down to a B minus because um, from their own words, they just thought they knew it and didn't take it seriously. So we are a clean slate. This is IFA 2, Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, and really, you have the tools to attain your definition of success. Uh, don't drink a shot of espresso every time I say your definition of success, except the next part of our debrief is based on your previous answer regarding your goal for this course, what advice would you give to a friend or a classmate who shares the same goal? Okay, so we received, again, really, really great responses. And this is a little bit a play on anyone I'm stuck with a problem that how do I... How do I get through it? Well, it's always easier. It's just like if you're having a friend and they're having a conversation and they have a problem in their life and you're just like, well, why don't you do this? And the answer seems so obvious. But then when I'm struggling uh, with something personally or work-wise or 
material wise, they're probably thinking the same thing. So if you can think about it, giving advice to somebody else, it's actually nice to kind of mirror back and think about what it means to us. So some of the answers were, to achieve my great goal, consistent work ethic will need to happen. And thinking about how these concepts apply to work concepts will help solidify that knowledge. Working together to accomplish our mutual goals, keeping each other motivated and remind each other of our goals, staying on top of the deliverables. So absolutely, staying on top of the deliverables. There's enough of an incentive to kind of keep going, but not you know, enough where you know, you can just do one week and then, and then forget about it. It's going to be, you know, you can work in those chunks and you can work ahead up until each of the term tests. The most important thing is to listen carefully. And so I would, I would agree. In addition, please ask the professor immediately if you don't understand. So I would say, yes, I am here for you. I would also say, write it down. Write it down and go for a walk. Like if you are really struggling with something, absolutely email me. But also consider consider the fact that have you ever? I, I will tell you a personal story, very short. Uh, but I struggled and struggled with this one cash flow when I was in industry, and I just received a pretty decent promotion. And I was like, oh my goodness, why can't I get this cash flow balance to balance? Cash flow saving to balance. Um, you know, and I started putting on all this pressure and I started making it bigger than it was. And I was like, I can balance this. I balanced it before. You know, why is this happening? It was also like Saturday after a really long week and um, <laughs> the elevator in our building was out. So I was walking upstairs and I just, I really wanted to balance this and I can go get a, a coffee from Tim Hortons, which was five floors down across the street. And then I have to walk the five floors up and I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And finally I was like, whatever, I give up. I'll come back and I'll try again later. So I packed up and I'm standing in line for coffee at Tim Hortons and all of a sudden I was like, oh. And it clicked and I wrote it down and you know, your brain is working. You are so much smarter and you know so much more than you give yourselves credit for. And you know, working smarter, not necessarily harder, that's part of like letting things go and then coming back to it. Uh, I just re-listened uh, to the book Range, and they actually support this. They support letting things go, and then actively recalling. So forgetting, actively recalling, and this actually transfers, uh, the studies in there discuss transferring from short-term to long-term memory, which actually comes in handy for you, because it's not like you study, and then write a test five minutes later. You study, a little bit, little bit, little bit, and then come back and write your test. And they say that that transference into long-term knowledge actually sticks in there longer, like a year, two years, three years. So, you know, give yourself a break, go get your Tim Hortons. Um, absolutely know that you can email me anytime. We have our Calendly office hours, I'd love to chat. Uh, but oftentimes too, I'll ask you, I'm like, oh, which bucket do you think you should go into? And I'll start asking you these questions so that you'll, you'll start kind of hearing my voice, uh, hopefully in a good way, to see, oh, okay, like, I can do that, and I can think through that. Um, one of the, I love when you guys email me uh, randomly, I heard from a few of you this summer, which was fabulous, thank you. Uh, I also hear from my former students, the graduates, uh, as they're in the CPA program, and one of the emails I received was after a uh, former student passed Core 1, and she said Core 1 is about 65% financial accounting, and she said, I could hear your voice in my head as I wrote the exam. <laughs> and then there was a smile on face. So, and it all worked out well for her. And those are kind of cool emails to receive, especially because I know that she did the work. She put the work in. She, you know, came to class. She watched, I had videos back then. She watched the videos. Uh, she participated in her education. And I'm just, I'm honored to be along for the ride. Okay. Uh, one more here, um, stay on top of the course load, learn more gradually throughout the sections. Yeah, little bits, little bits, little bits, small incremental improvements, um, it's really synthesizing and then applying.
you don't need to have a career in accounting. You don't have to use accounting, but if you have that confidence to see something, think about it, ask questions, and be curious, that's my goal uh, for you for this class is to build that confidence. And I am your coach, and I will be there along the way to help you with that, as well as all the other things that we're going to be doing this semester. Okay, I'm going to read out the quote on intelligence now. Intelligence is the efficiency with, what, with which you acquire new skills, tasks that you did not previously know about, that you did not prepare for. Intelligence is not a skill itself. It's not what you know, what you can do. It's how well and how efficiently you can learn new things. So when you see intelligence on display or an AI creature adapt to a new environment that it has not seen before, that its creators did not anticipate. When you see adaptation, when you see improvision, when you see generalization, that's intelligence. Francois Cholet works at Google. Intelligence. And there's going to be nothing artificial about our intelligence or nothing artificial about our term, but absolutely that is my hopes and dreams for you is that confidence to go somewhere, do something new, apply something new, and generalize it, synthesize it, apply it, and figure it out.